the context really and uh, uh, the variety of uh, projects really is impressive and it shows that the applied theater is actually a tool where you can then do a field work in wherever you want you know the all the context where you want to bring uh, change and uh, maybe build new context and uh, give uh, power to uh, some communities that doesn't have a voice it could be elderly it could be refugees it could be you know uh, people in small town uh, where you can just bring you know uh, people together give them few tools and uh, unexpected things happen we are in Vabalava. Vabalava is situated uh, in Narva. Narva is a port town in Estonia and we uh, caught we started the project uh, here with uh, Narva people and uh, the, uh, the essence of the project uh, was uh, to ask the people uh, to share their stories about Narva and to make a performance up in it. As we started a year ago, uh, and we had, and this was a time of COVID restrictions, uh, we, uh, we had to work four months uh, through Zoom. Everybody knows what's that, Zoom, <laughs> of course. And we uh, hadn't any, any kind of idea what is Narva exactly and then we started with the places and we asked uh, the people who joined to us to share their favorite places to share what is important in Narva how the people live in Narva and we did a bunch of improvisations uh, we uh, we, uh, we did storytelling, uh, we did different uh, things, even writings uh, meanwhile. And uh, for the spring, the end of the spring, we prepared the first part of it and that was about uh, their childhood and their uh, uh, and young years of these diff uh, people in different ages and um, this is kind of nostalgic part of our performance and then uh, we continued with the story we went deeply into today's uh, stories and the uh, most important uh, question was about identity and language and uh, then we got the second part of the performance and now, uh, now we have the performance Maya Narva. Uh, it's mostly uh, um, played in Russian uh, because the Russian is uh, the language what they speak here in Narva mostly and um, um, we also translated to Estonians <laughs> and it uh, in opposite way and um, we have a two-hour performance in English my Narva One of the projects what we did in 2019 was Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night Dream, but instead of making it as a staged performance, uh, a regular theatre performance, we did it as an uh, applied theatre piece in the site-specific performance in the forest, this mythical, magical Latvian forest, Buokaini, together with local community, um, implementing in the story also uh, some Latvian traditions, some stories of the forest, the connection between people and nature, um, and telling this story through the Shakespeare's language. 
so this project turned out, turned out to be uh, much grander than we expected at the very beginning. Uh, it involved more than 70 people from all around the district. They were uh, different age groups, people starting from age of five, and the eldest actors had, they were in their late 70s. So we had really wide range of people working on this project. Professional artists, artists from uh, theater director from France, together with Latvian choreographer and British dramaturg, created all the storylines. And uh, we as a producers uh, made this project possible uh, in this really uh, unusual circumstances and in the forest in actual midsummers, in summer solstice. And from this moment on, this local community, they were so uh, uh, they were so involved in this project creation process that uh, from that they uh, they continued their work together on Applied Theatre projects, uh, now going deeper in their research, researching local history, local stories, working within Manor House of Abgunste. Uh, together with Latvian theatre director uh, Dmitri Petrenko, uh, choreographers, dramaturgs, composers, uh, still continuing their work. Uh, unfortunately, because of the COVID-19, we were not able to finish uh, the performance and the, the premiere is still waiting to be shown to the audience, but we sincerely hope that it will be possible to do it this year. Um, and that is one of, uh, I think, really amazing example how community, once they are engaged in these activities, how they want to dig deeper, go deeper in the methodology. Uh, first project was celebrating their local traditions. They were first project was showing also how grand, uh, how they can make actually very grand and uh, magnificent things on their own if they have a good help of applied theater experts. And now the second project already brings them deeper in the researching their own stories, their own community. So I think it is very nice that they research, that they, they go step by step and go deeper. And I really hope that this community will continue their work and we will be able to work on much more projects in the future. Hello, I'm Ion Gavalo Zabele. A project manager of Foundation Anitium and uh, I'm going to tell you a story about another project that has uh, made a positive impact on the uh, activity of people from a smaller, more rural area of Latvia. Uh, we started to work with the community of a little town called Pedeze. Uh, it's in the eastern part of Latvia, uh, next to the border of Russia. And we uh, started uh, a community theatre production with them. The theatre production celebrates the wonderful and unique wedding tradition they have in the area. But also with the, this project we pointed out uh, the changes, the social changes that are happening in the place. What does it mean to them and uh, how it can be inhabited maybe again in the future. The people who participated in this project, their daily agenda is farming and uh, they are maybe not so connected with the cultural life or political life uh, that is around them. While the world stopped for the pandemic and we were not able to finish the production yet, we um, included them in another project that was uh, about media literacy and uh, we used this network we created uh, from applied theatre with the applied theatre as a tool and um, continue to work and, and to make uh, the society of Latvia maybe at, at least a little bit more active and aware of the things that are happening in the world. It started from five uh, practitioners of BATS going into the community and um, trying to do workshops and create a um, community project. And it ended in the second year by community itself taking action, writing application and owning this community project and disseminating it in itself. So it actually brought people together within multi-ethnic community of Pabrade uh, we had a sustainable cooperation, which uh, we are using now in another project. And the uh, community has a huge pride of the project. Now we are continuing. I know that in 2022, we will try to do Reiskema Pabradia free, 
where they will uh, use uh, canons and art projects, uh, art uh, and uh, not art project, uh, art objects, and people will hang it on the trees and while canoning people will see art but this is something that bats already is not doing the community itself you know taking action this is important i think and it shows uh, that applied theater really works uh, in uh, building spaces where people can cooperate and then creativity uh, somehow uh, happens Another project that I'm very proud uh, is called Ujekite, Come In, uh, created by Adele uh, Shumanskaite and Ruta Shmergelite. Girls, as a part of BATS uh, community project, started to do uh, video calls with seniors from elderly house, uh, home. And the uh, project started in lockdown. And girls were uh, uh, doing calls for maybe four or five months engaging in really in-depth conversations about life, about death, about love with uh, people who are uh, isolated, you know, in uh, that environment. And uh, then for a first, as a result of a community project, we did a video movie uh, about these video calls and the uh, result uh, really impressed me uh, by the artistic quality, first of all, and then uh, by the depth of the project. Uh, this uh, movie is now traveling with girls where they do, when they show the movie in different uh, surroundings, be, could be a cafe or the elderly home, and then invites, you know, young audiences to engage with elderly, you know, and uh, like showing that uh, the wisdom, you know, and this great resources of wisdom is there, you, you can just reach and take it. I really like that, that uh, they use, you know, uh, then this uh, product as an advocacy for uh, greater participation and intergenerational uh, contact. Mm -hmm.